Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and in this video I'm going to explain how we help children develop a really secure foundational understanding of decimal numbers. I'm going to explain how we give them the visual structure of the number line that's going to support their thinking and how we also give them the structure of base 10 to support their thinking and how we use that to connect their understanding of fractions to their understanding of decimals in different ways. So if you already know all that, here's your skip link to the next video, which is on calculating with decimals. It's definitely helpful if you've watched the Foundations of Fractions video before this one. So here's a link to that one now. And as I start to use place value counters in this video, you may find it useful to revise the video on base 10 apparatus. And here's a link to that one. OK, let's get started with our decimal numbers to one decimal place first, and then we'll come back and look at two decimal places. So when we were working with the number line in the foundation of fractions, we did this exercise, putting zero here and one here and asking children to name the intervals as fractions. So this would be three tenths and we're counting up in tenths and we can easily name them all. Then we're going to introduce the idea of decimal numbers below the number line. If you are working with a large group of children, there's probably one who can already name that. But if you're just working with one child, you're going to need to teach them probably. So that's going to be 0 0.3. And this is still 0 and that is still 1. And see if they can puzzle out what the numbers between are. And the key point here is that we are zipping together the decimal notation and the fractions so that when they see decimal numbers, they link them to fractions. So if this is 0 0.5, it's gonna be 5 tenths. And immediately from the work we've already done, that child may then say, oh, so 0 0.5 is a half. Or you could discuss that with them. And we can complete that number line. We could also then shift the number line, keeping the scale the same. So if we started and said, this is three and this is four, we could look at the fractions in between. So this might be three and two tenths and explore what that is as a decimal number. So that's gonna be 3.2 and so on. And we play around with these until a child is confidently placing and naming decimal numbers and linking them to fractions and mixed numbers. And then we can also get a child to build numbers with place value counters. So if you had the number 326.1, they would need three one hundreds, three of these, two tens, six ones, and one, 0 0.1, which on the back is one tenth. Of course, you can make these out of coloured paper. And just to prove how easy it is to make your own place value counters, I've even made some magnetic ones. So if you look at carefully at these, the blue ones say one tenth, if that's not completely clear. We would hope that a child would be able to puzzle out that this number here is 231.3. It's nice to link the place value counters back to your deans, your base 10 blocks. So each 100 is one of those. Each tenth is one of those. Each one is one of those. And then you can discuss, well, what would one tenth look like? You would need to take your centimeter cube and slice it into 10 equal parts. Each will be square and it'd be one millimeter thick because these are one centimeter cubes. It's lovely to explore all that. You can draw some pictures of tenths in circles just so a child really knows what one tenth is. And if the child you're working with is coping comfortably with these exercises, they've got a good foundational understanding of decimal numbers to one decimal place. Two decimal places is a little harder. Here are some number lines for decimal numbers to two decimal places. And of course, they're just cut into 100 parts with each tenth being cut into 10 parts. 
If you want either of these worksheets, number lines or decimal number lines, they're available to download free from my Facebook group, which is Expert Primary Maths Teaching, or you can find links to other sites where you can download them in the description of my YouTube channel. If you just go to the About tab, you should be able to find those links. So, if we return to going from zero to one, zero, there, one here, and we're now focusing on counting in decimal numbers. We want a child to be able to see the tenths still and be able to notate that as 0 0.3 and so on. And of course, we can put some fractions underneath so that we keep that link developing. And because you're working one to one with a child, you can really check their understanding. Are they getting this? Can they do the next bit themselves? Got that great instant feedback. And then we can have a discussion about what's going on between, say, 0 0.3 and 0 0.4, 3 tenths and 4 tenths. What's going on here? And we can look at one of these and say maybe this one here. Little arrow to that is 0 0.3 sixths because we have got 3 tenths and six extra little bits. And what are those little bits? Well, there's a hundred of them in a whole, so they are one hundredths. And then we want to ask a child, how do we express 0 0.36 in fractions? And here we get to a really deep and important insight that lots of children and adults have failed to fully grasp and that is that there are two ways of expressing it as fractions. A lot of people haven't even really got one way. We're going to make sure the child you're working with securely has the two ways of understanding this that they need. So your first way for 0 0.36 is to say that there are 36 one hundredths up to that point. So that fraction there is 36 over 100. The second way of seeing this is that it is also 3 tenths and 6 one hundredths. So 36 one hundredths is 3 tenths and 6 one hundredths. They really need to understand that decimal number in both ways. And we can play around with larger and smaller decimals, practicing, making sure they can see each decimal number clearly what it is, and change it into fractions in two different ways. Firstly, as one hundredths, and secondly, as tenths and one hundredths. Then we can also go on and explore decimal numbers where this isn't zero. So this was seven, and that's eight. We can ask children, well, what's this number here? Put an arrow to it. And it is one, two, three, four, five, and one, little bit. So that is 7.51. And we would expect them to know also that it is seven and 51 one hundredths. And it is also seven and five tenths or a half and one one hundredth. Have to understand both those ideas. And you should develop this further with the base 10 apparatus. So if we come back to our previous number, if this had been 231.32, we'd also need to add on two one hundredths. And again, we can talk about what that would mean with our apparatus. If we slice this into 10 squares, we'd then have to take one of those squares that's this shape, but one millimeter thick, and slice it into 10 columns. You could call them their little cuboids, and they're one millimeter by one millimeter by 10 millimeters. But what we can do with our base 10 apparatus is start to look at the different ways 
that you can understand decimals to two decimal places. It's easiest to look at a small number between zero and one. So if we get rid of this, just leave the 0 0.32. And all of those go. What we can then ask a child is, how do you represent that with base 10 apparatus? How do you represent it in another way? And what we're asking for here is the same kind of exploration that we had originally when we were exchanging tens for ones. We can take one of those one tenths and split it into 10 one hundredths and we can represent 0 0.32 like this and we could do that again with more one hundredth counters and again so we would be 32 one hundredths. It's lovely to talk about the fact that if this was in Dean's blocks in base 10 blocks it would fill the same space because all we've done is cut up the bits we had into smaller bits but they're still the same total amount. If your child is going to calculate with decimal numbers they need to be able to do this and understand what they're doing. One final exercise before we leave this topic that is introducing your child to some common fraction to decimal equivalents. So if we come back to these number lines here, if we start with zero and finish with one, it's really about the quarter and the three quarters. So as fractions, half is here, and we can help the children explore where a quarter and three quarters are. Could do it by folding until they're confident that a quarter is here and that it is therefore 0 0.25. And three quarters is going to be 0 0.75. Again, we can shift up and down the number line. If you print out a few more of these, we could start at say 23 and 24 and look at what 23 and a quarter would be in the same way. It's very good to do and just begin to build your child's confidence in recognising those common fraction and decimal equivalents. And of course, half is 0 0.5. And there we can start to talk about 0 0.5 and 0 0.50, how they are the same thing. A zero on the end of a decimal number doesn't matter. It matters if there's no decimal point, it certainly changes the number. But if it's on the end of a decimal number, it doesn't matter. That's a lovely conversation to have at this stage. So your child you're working with should start to become familiar and confident with the idea that 0.5 is a half, 0.75 is three quarters, and 0.25 is one quarter. Then it's not a shock to them if other people are using that result and that equivalence. So your takeaways from this video are that if children are going to come to deeply understand decimal numbers to two decimal places, they have to understand them on the number line. They have to link them to fractions in two different ways for numbers to two decimal places. And they also have to understand them with base 10 apparatus. And place value counters are becoming particularly crucial by now. They should have some exposure to the idea that a quarter is 0.25, half is 0.5 and three quarters is 0.75. And they should have had some exposure to the idea that if you put a zero on the end of a decimal number, it doesn't actually change the size of the number. If you have any questions about this topic, please do post them in the questions here. I will try to answer them in the comments or on the live streams which are coming soon. Thank you for taking this time to care that your child learns maths really really well. Our world definitely needs the next generation to be great at maths. Bye for now!